Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is another reaction to another random video, as I always say, but this one is five reasons you shouldn't mess with the USA. I saw this on my feed a lot, and I don't know, it was suggested ages ago. I remember it being suggested a lot. I think it's because this is like around the time I was doing a lot more military reactions. But as I've said before, sometimes when suggestions come, I sort of lose them and this kind of thing. And then other sort of videos come, get, get suggested more than I forget about the other ones. I'm starting to write, I said this before, but I'm like writing down reactions that I'm doing so I can plan it a bit better so I don't forget other ones and just sort of keep a sort of schedule with it, which helps me as well as it makes the sort of fair for like certain reactions. But yeah, like I said, this video is five reasons you shouldn't mess with the USA. Let's just see what this, what's in this video. I don't really know what to expect. Again, I assume it's to do with the military because he's talking, he's, this is the Soviet Union now, so I assume, yeah, it's going to link it with them. But don't know, we'll just see in the video. But hopefully you guys are going to enjoy. Quick shout out to my Instagram and my Twitter links in the description for those. Same for my Patreon, links all there. And yeah, let's just give this a watch. The collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 90s left the United States as the sole superpower in the world. And it's never looked back. In all aspects of the world, the United States is indeed a superpower, especially when it comes to its military might, which is unsurpassable in its strength technological superiority, operational capabilities, and power projection across the globe. In this video, we'll take a look at the five top reasons why you wouldn't want to go against the US military establishment. The United States Air Force is the strongest in the world, not only in the number of operational aircraft, but also in technological superiority. The country currently operates a total of over 15,000 military aircraft, combining all the branches of the military service, including the US Navy, US Army, Coast Guard, and the US Marines. As of 2017, the US Air Force alone has a fleet of over 5,300 aircraft, 406 intercontinental ballistic missiles, and 170 military satellites, greater than any other country in the world. The USA has the largest number of stealth aircraft designed to be silent killers and untrackable by- Bro, these are so fucking weird, man. These are the weirdest looking things. They just, they're so alien, man. I'd see one of these in the sky and I'm thinking like we're getting abducted by aliens, bro. They're so strange. I know where they're built, like aerodynamically, just to be quiet and all this kind of stuff, but they just look wild, man. The radar defense systems of most countries in the world some of these stealth aircraft include air superiority fighters, such as the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, heavy bombers such as the B-2 Spirit. In fact, the United States pioneered this technology in the 1980s with the introduction of the F-117 Nighthawk stealth attack aircraft. Stealth aircraft are designed to avoid detection using a variety of technologies that reduce radar reflection from ground, sea, or air-based radar antennas, thereby reducing its radar cross-section, or RCS. This revolutionary technology allows a fifth-generation aircraft, such as the F-22 Raptor, with a max takeoff weight of 83,500 pounds, to have a radar cross-section of just 0.0001 meters squared, about the size of a bumblebee. What? What's more insane is that the massive B-2 <laughs> bomber also has the same radar cross-section as the F-22 Raptor. Thus, it becomes extremely difficult to track stealth aircraft. Even if the enemy spots them on their radar scopes, it's a whole other story to successfully track them and register a missile kill. Yeah, they must be. The whole idea behind this technology is to break the chain in which a conventional surface-to-air missile defense system works. It's the same reason countries like China and Russia are also hard at developing their own stealth fighter, the Chengdu J-20 and the Sukhoi Su-57, respectively. These aircraft will allow the US Air Force to assert its air superiority over any battlefield of the future. And we all know that control of these skies is the biggest decider in any war. The next reason why any country going to war with the US military should think twice is because of the strength of the US Navy and its dominance yeah, over the- I've, lo I've looked through this before. The Navy, like, it's just everything. The aircraft carriers to the ships, everything. It's just ridiculous at this point. Like the sky, they've won like in the sky, like with planes and whatever. But in the air, sorry. But like on the ocean, bro, it's different, man. Their Navy's ridiculous. The world's ocean. Especially From what I remember seeing before, this will probably teach me more than I've already the, seen. The Navy's well. super carriers. The US Navy currently operates 11 nuclear-powered Nimitz-class supercarriers, which is the largest aircraft carrier fleet in the world. The only Navy that can come close in terms of technological advancement 
is probably the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom. Bang. But Come they only on, have boys. two operational carriers. And to be fair, if there's any two countries that stood together, it probably would be the US and the UK. So you know what, let's bump it up to 13. I'll take the 13 as well. I'll take the 11 ones from the US and I'll be like, yeah, the UK will take some of those. The same from the US as well, just to make us feel a little bit stronger than the we The Nimitz are. class of carriers has a displacement <laughs> of over 100,000 tonnes and can carry a complement of up to 70 aircraft. They're literally a floating small town in the ocean with its own airport. The Nimitz class carriers in themselves are extremely potent offensive weapons, but the way they operate in what is called the carrier strike groups makes these ships even more deadly. A carrier seldom deploys alone. There are always a fleet of surface and underwater assets surrounding them and forming a strike group. These include guided missile cruisers, a destroyer squadron, attack submarines and other support vessels. Together, they project the power of the carrier and at the center of the group forward towards Mate. the enemy. Bro, just imagine you just see this coming, like you're on these shores and you just see this coming up to your shores or whatever, like you're in a boat and you just see this going past you, you would shit yourself. I mean, I would, and I assume a lot of people are like me. <laughs> but I mean, just how many are there? There's got to be what? 30 to 40 ships just there alive. While the carrier is carrying out its offensive role with the use of its air wing, the other ships are responsible to protect its flanks against any enemy attack. This combination of offensive and defensive strategy makes the US carrier strike group almost impenetrable. The United States Navy maintains nine such carrier strike groups, eight of which are based in the United States and one that's forward deployed to Japan. For over 50 years, this has been the principal element of US power protection, and the Nimitz class of supercarriers are at the center of it all. Despite this, the US is currently in the process of developing a new class of carriers, called the Gerald R. Ford class, intended to replace the Nimitz class ships. That's what I've about it. This new supercarrier will be even more technologically advanced and is expected to continue US dominance of the oceans well into the late 21st century. The third reason why you shouldn't fight the US military is their massive stockpile of nuclear and conventional oh, yeah. intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs. The ICBM plays the role of the land leg in the US nuclear triad, along with the Trident submarine-launched ballistic missile, SLBM, and nuclear warheads carried on long-range strategic bombers. ICBMs are launched from ground-based missile silos, achieving high suborbital spaceflight, approximately 1,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. The body of the missile then separates from ground-based missile what? silos, achieving high suborbital spaceflight, approximately 1,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. The body of the missile then separates from the warhead, which re-enters the atmosphere and free falls to the assigned target at hypersonic speeds. The US military currently operates. It leaves the atmosphere. What? I didn't even know that was possible. I knew it was possible. I didn't know um, missiles. 400 ICBMs from its base in Wyoming, Montana, and North Dakota. The LGM 30G Minuteman 3 is the only type of ICBM that is currently operational in the US. The Minuteman 3 family of ICBMs were first developed in the 1960s as a response to the Soviet nuclear threat. Throughout the Cold War and beyond, these missiles have undergone constant modernization. In the last decade alone, the US military has undertaken $7 billion worth of upgrades. The rocket propulsion engines, the propellants used, the guidance system, and even the flight control surfaces have all been refurbished. The upgraded missiles are completely different from its 1960s counterparts, except for the shell. These state-of-the-art improvements and modernization programs have kept the Minuteman 3 system operational for over 50 years with improved reliability that supports the missile's remarkable 99% alert rate. The latest versions of the missiles have a range of over 8,000 miles, which is greater than the diameter of the Earth at 7,917.5 miles. <laughs> They can carry multiple 330 kiloton nuclear warheads, which is 20 times greater than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima. Bruh. I'm not saying this is, gonna, this is scaring me, but this is just when you realise how messed up World War III would be. Like, how actually just crazy World War III would be, man. Mate. <laughs> they can travel the whole length of the, the Earth. They can blow up. Like they're, they're 20 times more powerful than the 
bomb that blew up Hiroshima. Like, what? And Nagasaki. Am I even listening to? Not only to? that, each of these warheads can be assigned to different targets independently. The technology is called Multiple Independently Targetable Reentry Vehicle, or MIRV, and was first developed for the Minuteman III family of missiles. So any country messing with the United States will have to deal with this awesome arsenal of firepower, which can be launched at a moment's notice. If it weren't the ICBMs or the stealth fighters raining fire down on you, it would be precision-guided munitions, or better known, as smart bombs or PGMs instead. This is another big reason why not messing with the US military is a good idea. All branches of the US military use smart bombs in some forms or the other. These weapon systems are designed to be precise and hit a specific target with maximum efficiency. These bombs are so effective that during the first Gulf War, PGMs comprised only 9% of weapons fired, but accounted for 75% of all successful hits. Since then, for the US military at least, the days of normal artillery shells and... Un Bro, seeing missiles launch as well is just nuts to me. Like, you see the power of everything, like... What... Like, I don't really know how to ask this, but say... I know this isn't even to do the video, but I just have questions that I want to ask as well. I've already asked a lot. But you see how they're shooting. Is there anything that, like... Could, like... I swear I saw a launch attempt. It's like ISIS, an ISIS launch attempt. It was like all over the internet, like a meme or something. But they failed. It failed to actually like launch, and it just fell out, and it just exploded. I think. How likely is that to happen? I guess you have to set everything up properly. But like, what are the chances of that? I guess if it is all set up, there's no chance of it. But still, there could be like malfunctions and stuff. But again, the power of how they shoot out, I find it so satisfying in a kind of psychotic way because it's obviously not a thing that. Five percent of all successful but, hits. Since then, like this for the one. US military at least, the this days of normal artillery shells and unguided bombs are long gone. Nowadays, the military uses PGMs from air, ground, and sea. Precision sea. guided munitions That's come in various forms and use different kinds of technologies to achieve precise hits. A large majority of PGMs use the Global Positioning System, or GPS, of satellites to guide their trajectory to target. However, sometimes this becomes a problem, as GPS coverage is not always reliably available everywhere across the globe, or bad weather conditions can hinder operations. Thus, the Office of Naval Research, the Naval Surface Warfare Center, and the Army Research Laboratory have all coordinated to develop the first ever artillery-fired smart munition that will not use GPS guidance. The project is known as Moving Target Artillery Round, or MTAR for short. The MTAR shell can be guided onto stationary as well as moving targets in both land and sea, using a combination of guidance technology. The best part is that these shells can be fired from the existing M777A2 155mm towed howitzer and the M109A7 Paladin Integrated Management self-propelled 155mm artillery systems Fuck. already in use by the US military. The shells will also feature an extended range of 40 to 60 miles using rocket boosters to propel them. Once finished, it will afford the US military another potent weapon system that outclasses others around the world. Lastly, the fifth and final reason why you shouldn't fight the US military is drones. We're all drones. familiar with what an unmanned aerial vehicle or drone is and what it's supposed to do. But in recent years, the usability of UAVs are steadily increasing. I didn't realize drones were this big. To encompass all spheres of military operations and the US military is the pioneering spirit behind it. At first, used only for surveillance missions, drones were quickly weaponized after the 9-11 attacks and have been extensively used by the US military in the war against terror as an offensive weapon platform. It's forecasted that over the next decades, the US is in line to purchase over 1,000 combat drones of various classifications. Some of them, like the Lockheed Martin RQ-170 Sentinel and the Boeing MQ-25 Stingray, are already in the final stages of development. This is a drone. A drone... What? And once finished, will provide the US military with state-of-the-art platforms capable of multi-role operations, ranging from attack missions to aerial refueling. Drone technology has reached such heights today that a single UAV can loiter miles above the surface of the Earth for hours, waiting for the target to show its head and sticking with impunity. 
This capability will allow all the services under the US military to reduce its dependency on manned platforms, thereby reducing the risks during future combat operations. These five weapon systems make the US military extremely dangerous for any adversary looking to get into a conflict with them. In a conventional warfare setting, it's almost impossible to beat the US military machine. That's why modern enemies of the United States are employing more and more asymmetric warfare strategies against the mighty US military. Despite that, the US military juggernaut is hand down the most powerful military complex in the world today and probably will be for decades to come. That's all we have for you today, folks. Thanks what for sticking video? around till the end. If you like the video and want to stay up to date on cool military stuff like this, then click the subscribe button. And I enjoyed this a lot, man. The in-depth details of like how just how powerful the US is on all fronts, it just makes you realize. But yeah, I, I, you know, I, I sort of saw in videos previous like why and it made sense because of just how powerful the US was. But yeah, now you can see why countries that are like that the US are like enemies or enemies with or whatever don't have good terms with don't try and cause anything because it's just like sort of what suicide in a sense like they're just creating their own downfall for their own country if they ever like attempted to do anything it's nuts teacher what is the national blood of pakistan student american drone <laughs> five reasons you shouldn't mess with the u.s coronavirus don't mind if i do fuck's sake the only greatest threats to us to the usa are both <laughs> what are these comments i love how you got a british guy to read the screen after watching five reasons you shouldn't mess with the usa kim jong-un hold my beer Believe me, I don't need five reasons to know not to mess with the US. I only need one, and that's Florida. <laughs> Florida's crazy, bro. Florida is wild. I forgot to mention that there are millions of guns in the hands of the citizens. Yeah, that's something else that I've found out recently as well. And yet, yeah, the, the worst enemy of the USA is itself. What does he mean by that? Oh, I guess people against people kind of thing. US, you can't defeat me. USSR, I know, but he can. Vietnam, Vietnamese rice farmers has connected to the server. <laughs> Comments are so wild, brother. Yeah, another bang video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this.